Hi there, Blues fans. I hope you're all keeping well and safe. Um, I'm Connor Wood. I'm a second row with Kirkcaldy. And I've been asked to pick my greatest 15. Um, I'm going to be picking this team from a pool of players that I've picked, uh, played with. Um, so that'll be starting from 2011, 2012 sort of time onwards. So this will be a very, a fairly recent team. Uh, but nonetheless, this is a, an incredibly talented team, I think, that um, could hold their own against a lot of teams in Scotland. I think there's a lot of talent that has been around Kirkcaldy recently, and I think it's only fair that these guys uh, get a mention. So we'll just jump straight into it then. Um, starting off with my first prop, I'd be picking Marcus Salt. Now, what you get with Marcus is... He's just he's got a colossal hit on him. Whether he's tackling or running with the ball in hand, the collision that he's involved in, nine times out of ten, the opposite number is hurting. And you see that on the pitch, and you see that big hit, and it's phenomenal to see. It gives you such a lift as a squad, um, certainly as an individual, um, and having that in your team is massive. Um, and that's something that Marcus regularly brings to the table. He's consistently putting in those big hits and it's an absolute joy to see and to have on your team. Um, the other thing with Marcus is he is a absolutely phenomenal scrummager. Um, he's got that ability to get under his opposition prop and tear, tear an opposition scrum down, really. Um, it's, well, I mean, that prop, you need to be a good scrummager and Marcus has got it. Um, he's also got the potential to play 80 minutes, I've seen him play it and for a big chap like him that can put in these explosive hits, that's a real, real credit to him um, so I think Marcus is definitely going to be the number one um, At hooker, uh, I've picked Greg Wallace now, I've picked Greg because he has got an absolute wealth of rugby knowledge. He's very rugby smart. Um, also, his leadership as well. I think um, as a younger player trying to sort of stamp my mark on the first 15 squads, um, you looked to Greg and you listened. He was one of those players that when he's got something to say, when he's not joking around, you listen to it. Um, he's just he's got a lot of knowledge there, and I think if players can take away from that and continue that on, then I think it, it can only be good for the club and and for the team. Um, the other thing with Greg is that is when he comes on in these sort of difficult and hard games where it's tight or we're maybe behind slightly he's always got that no nonsense attitude when um, when it does get difficult like by nature he's very jokey very sarcastic and all the rest of it but when it does when when it does get hard he's there he's in the moment and you know he'll fight tooth and nail and it's a very respectable uh, trait to have so it's always been a player that I've tried to listen to and I've always um, tried to show as much respect to everything that he said as possible up to now, so he would definitely be my hooker. At number three, I've got um, Big Dodd. Um, played with Dodd for a couple of seasons, and being able to second row, uh, to second row behind him is absolutely phenomenal. You get that chat back from him if if he's needing something, he would tell you. And again, it's back to the point with Greg. It's passing on that knowledge. Um, I found certainly that you pick up more from the players around you during games than you do um, during training. So having players like that that are um, willing to be constructive and say, look, this is what you need to do. And that's when you need to do it. That's absolutely smashing. That's exactly what you need, for, especially for young players coming through. Um, the other thing is that uh, Big Dot, he, 
he didn't just say it, he, he led by example as well. Um, one thing with Dodd that I found, um, I think it's a thing that lifters and lineouts don't get enough credit for, but whenever I was getting lifted by Dodd, it was night and day compared to any uh, any other sort of pod that I've been jumping with. Um, so it was just phenomenal to have him in the squad and it was such a boost while he was playing and again carrying on whatever knowledge he's passed on to players as well. It's phenomenal, phenomenal to have that. So Dodd would be my uh, tight head prop. First of my second rows, um, I'm having to pick Matt Harvey. He's just too good to ignore. Um, and it's the same with the past two players as well. He's got that knowledge and he's willing to say, this is what we need during the game. And say, look, that what you've done there, don't do that. You should have done this or you should have maybe thought about that. That's the type of um, players that I think are invaluable to your team. Um, away from passing on knowledge though with Matt Harvey he, again a very rugby smart player um, he had that rugby head on him and he knew when to crash it up he knew when to give it out wide he he has that he had that vision when he was playing with Kirkcaldy and it was always great to play alongside and again as a second row, having Matt Harvey in the line out with you, being able to watch the way he would move or just the way he went about things in a line out, it was great to be able to see that and have that in your squad and hopefully try and take that forward as well. So I think he was a guy that led by example and a guy that you would easily follow. So Matt Harvey would definitely be my uh, first second row. And to partner him in the second row, I'd have big Michael Harper. Um, with Michael Harper, um, like Marcus, it's just explosive when he's got ball in hand. You'll see Michael Harper running 20 metres with four boys hanging off the back of him. Very, very difficult player to bring down. Never mind stop. Um, and it always lifted your team. You've you seen Michael Harper making that break in the middle of the pitch and you think right okay let's go let's um, take advantage of this now let's get another big runner on it right off the back of it let's try and get that ball out wide now the defence has been tied in having that player there in Michael to be able to tie in defenders the way that he does it opens up gaps everywhere else on the pitch and it gives you so much more of a chance to exploit a defence when they're focused on one player really um, the other thing with Michael as well is that in defence as well, he was the last person you wanted to run at because you knew if you, if you got within range of him, you were getting smashed. He was a very big tackler and same as before, it lifts the squad. Seeing that huge hit, that huge run, it gives you that boost in game and I think uh, it, it definitely pays dividends when you're on the pitch with him. So for that reason, I think Michael Harper is going to be in number, number five. Uh, blindside flanker, uh, I've gone with Jack Powell. With Jack, you get 80 minutes of tackling, just relentless tackling time and time again. His tackle count must be through the through the roof. It is phenomenal the amount of work that he puts in in defence. He carries the ball well. He rucks well. He's an absolute nuisance in the rucks. Um, slowing ball down, whether where whether it's been legally or not he is an infuriating player to play against um, so I think for, for those reasons alone he's got to be in but again he's another player that talks on the pitch he's a motivator um, you hear him on the pitch and you listen because you know he's what he's saying is right he's not the type of player that just speaks up to have a moan or just speaks up to question the referee. He's a player that speaks when something needs said, and when it's said, you listen. Um, 
So yeah, another phenomenal forward there in Jack Powell, and he's definitely going to be my uh, blindside flanker. Um, on open side, I've gone with Dale Turner. Um, and Dale is just an end, he's an endless ball of energy. He's absolutely everywhere on the pitch. Um, again, another nuisance at breakdown. The amount of turnovers he'll win in the season is phenomenal. Um, his kick chase as well for, for a forward when you're um, you're tired from going about in the rucks or just constantly working. You look up, and next thing you know. Dale's on the end of a kick, he's gathered it and he scored a try and you think how on earth has he done that? Um, it's a very, um, from what I've seen anyway, unique thing to have from from a flanker and um, it's brilliant to have that on your squad and you see that again, it lifts the squad again so um, I think for those reasons alone he's he's got to be in the squad. At number eight, um, I've gone with Liam Nielsen. Now, as a player coming up from Colts and into the squad, Liam was another player that would take you under his arm and carry you along and um, help you get a better grasp of the game and help you improve as a player, um, not just individually, but as a team player as well. And I remember he um, was captain with Kokori for a while. And he had, in my eyes, he, he was a brilliant leader. Um, constantly motivating players to give their best and to give their all for for that um, for that jersey and that uh, crest on the on the shirt. Um, I think he really was just a, le a leader among men. Um, constantly talking on the pitch, whether not even if it was directly to you or. Um, when there was a stoppage in the game but if there was a ruck that he thought was um, challengeable he'd be calling for that counter ruck he'd be calling for that counter counter mall or whatever it was um, he was constantly talking and having that on your squad having that commander there that you can follow is invaluable and I thought uh, obviously before he had his uh, knee injury I thought that was absolutely fantastic to have on the pitch um, I think now he's coaching, I think it's the Colts with Colin Harvey and for the Colts that are with him or were with him last year anyway um, they will have picked up so much from him uh, I think it was fantastic at getting a message across um, so for those reasons I think Liam Nielsen will be my number 8 At number nine, I've picked Gav McKenzie. Um, with Gav, I think you get a consistent good service from him at the base of a ruck or the back of a mall. Um, with Gav, uh, he has been the number nine in the squad for a lot of the time that I've been playing. And I think having that consistency there um, is paramount. You, you know what you're getting. You know what lines you can run, you know um, what Gav works well with and you know Gav is looking for the same from us as well and he knows um, there's that uh, team chemistry there with Gav um, so he's been an absolute outstanding um, servant to the club, he really has um, especially on the pitch um, the other thing with Gav is that again it's another leader um, as a forward if you've got your head at the bottom of a ruck or tighten them all, he's there, pull out the back of your jersey tail and get out here, get out there, I, want you, I need you doing this, I need you doing that, having those eyes and those ears at the back of you saying this is what we need to do, go and do it, it's, again, it's invaluable. Um, so the other thing with Gav that I've got here as well is that I've never seen a nine in my life being able to bounce off a defender as well as he does. The number of times I've seen him have a wee cheeky pick and go and bounce off two players making 10 metres before um, getting brought down for another forward to then pick and go and pick a go again, let him get back to his feet and reset from there. That 
that ability he has just to bounce off defenders I think is phenomenal, especially from a nine. So um, for those reasons, he's he's in my squad. At number ten, um, there's no question here really. Uh, it's it's Quinny. Um, played with Quinny on a few occasions, and it's, it's a running theme throughout my squad. It's the communication on the pitch. It's um, it's, it's those rugby smarts. It's just a mixture of everything. There, Quinny's a very very talented player, and having him at ten and being able to run outside of him and take on what he's saying during a game in, in terms of what lines to look for and what gaps to look for um, it's absolutely fantastic to have that on the pitch and at the same time when you're playing with that you think okay this is brilliant this is going really well and then you come to the next game and he's not there and you think Christ I was spoiled that game it really really is absolutely uh, fantastic um, having them there at 10 and just having that knowledge and that skill set there inside you and feeding your ball um, throughout the game is just fantastic so Quinny has to be 10 in my eyes uh, next I'm going to go with my centres um, this one was a little bit tricky for me because I was thinking well, there's three names that I had in, sort of ring, in the ring for it. Um, I thought well, I could go with Mark Wallace and Ian Gillis because um, uh, I thought the partnership there was phenomenal with Mark Wallace being that big hard runner and then having Ian Gillis there as an absolute brick wall in the middle of the pitch was fantastic. Um, but I also couldn't ignore, jo ignore Josh Laird. Um, I think individually he's probably one of the most talented players I've played with. Um, so my centres are going to be Mark Wallace and Josh Laird. Um, so 12, having Mark Wallace, I think, again, another leader. Fantastic leader, he led by example. Um, another motivator. Um, and like I've said before, hard runner and a fierce tackler as well. He was the type of boy that as soon as... Um, he worked hard to get in the right positions and then when it was time to do the hard work as well he was relentless and he was consistent another boy that you would follow no questions asked um, so for me it had to be Mark Wallace in the centre and number 9 like I said before I've gone with Josh Laird um, and yeah, like I said before, one of the most individually talented players I've, I've played with. Um, he's got skill, he's got vision, he's got a lethal step on him. The number of tries I've seen Josh score from a pick and go situation, um, and he's just he's put in that lethal step, done a defender or two from ten meters out, and he's over the whitewash for a try. It's it's a fantastic ability to have. Um, the other thing with Josh as well is that pass that he's got is pinpoint, it's accurate. Um, very, very rarely do you see it go wrong. Nine times out of ten, if not more, you see it work. And you see a winger released on the outside with acres of space. Um, I think having that in your squad, um, you, couldn't, you couldn't go without it. And I think Josh will be very sorely missed this year. Um, he was a talisman last year for us and uh, I do I wish him every success uh, this coming season and it's a shame that, yeah, that he's not still here so Josh Laird would definitely be at 13 um, on the wings um, so number 11 I've got Connor Littlejohn in my squad um, Connor is a player that Constantly fights above his weight class. Um, he's he's got this uh, pit pit bull attitude. I think he's very fierce when he plays. Um, 
and you've seen him going up a boy against boys twice his size, twice his weight, and him coming out on top. Um, I think that having that heart and that uh, ability is just fantastic. Uh, he's got speeds to burn players on the outside. He's got vision. He's not a greedy player, um, and he does. He's got that little spark. I can remember um, two or three years back we were playing away at Howell Fife. We were down by just under a try. Clock had gone red. Um, Howell Fife trying to slow the ball up, just tight drives uh, with their forwards. Next thing you know, Connor Littlejohn's in the middle of that ruck and he's somehow got the ball and passed it out where we've gone and counter attacked from there and scored the winning try. Um, he's got that ability to, change, to, to flip a game on his head. So, for me, you can't go without that in a squad. So he's in. And... On the other wing, I've picked Owen Bonner. Again, another um, fiery little player. Um, he's, his physicality on the wing, I think, is brilliant. There's um, not a lot of wingers that I've seen that have come up against him and out-muscled him. Um, he's got enough speed. He's a fierce tackler as well. He gets, he gets up in your face as a winger. He's a very aggressive and abrasive little player. Um, and I think that's it's a, it's a fantastic trait to have on the pitch. Um, is another player that is work rate as well. I think um, he always works hard. He really does. Um, and I think he's just a really he, he's not greedy as well. Looking back, there was a it didn't lead to a try, but um, I think it was against Kelso a year or two back. But um, linking up with the likes of Finlay Smith and Josh Laird and the offline game between the three of them was just fantastic. He's He's got that vision to to give that pass and to draw that defender and give that offload. And uh, I think he's coming on really well as a rugby player. Um, so uh, for, that, for those reasons, I've uh, Owen Bonner in my team. At fullback, I've gone for Finlay Smith um, purely down to the fact that he is the best tackler in the league, to be quite frank. Um, you'll see somebody slip through the middle or slip, up, slip through out wide. Then you look back and you see Finlay at fullback and you don't worry as much as you probably should because you know Finlay's got him. Um, whether it's the... So, uh, their winger that's going to burn, up, going to try and burn him on the outside. Finley will get him if he's got a player that's going to try and step him. Again, Finley's there. Likewise, if it's our giant number eight pelting towards him, again, next thing you know, this big six foot four beast of a man has just been tied up around the ankles, and Finley's brought him to deck. Um, it's 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 fantastic to have a full back, um, and you see that again. And it, you know that's your get-out-of-jail-free card. But at the same time, you see that tackle happen and it lifts your squad. You think, wow, that's brilliant. We, we really should have conceded five, seven points there. But we've got that player on the pitch. And, I mean, it's just it's fantastic to have. It really is. Um, and Finlay as well, he's, he's really coming into his own as a player. Um, he's getting louder as a player. You're, you're hearing him communicate a lot better now, uh, very quiet when he first came up to seniors with me as well, there was a lot of boys in that sort of age sort of group that came up and were quite quiet for a while, but Finlay's really finding his voice now as well, um, so for me, he's got to go at full back, he's, he's too good not to. Um, on to my bench. Um, so my substitute hooker um, I've got down here is Craig Hamilton now Craig is a very young hooker um, who is coming into his own um, the one thing that Craig really provides in uh, by the bucket fill is, um, is line out throwing it's pinpoint accurate um, and in a game 
especially up in Scotland where it's windy, it's wet, it's crappy. Um, you need that. Um, so having that to bring on off off the bench, I think, it can really settle a team down, especially the line out. The other thing I like with Craig is that if things are going badly, he doesn't moan. His in-game chat is brilliant. It's constructive. It's right. Here's the problem. This is what would help. And having that sort of control and that um, mindset is brilliant to have. I really do rate that. Um, and it's actually quite rare to see. So um, I think definitely he has to be on, be on my bench. Um, substitute prop, I've got Danny Jennings. Now, Danny, especially recently, has been working a lot on his fitness and it is, is paying off. Um, his work rate is absolutely phenomenal. Again, another 80 minute um, prop um, alongside Marcus uh, when he needs to be. Um, with Danny, whether it's the first minute or the 80th minute, he's the first at the ruck. He's the first one helping you out. He's the first one there, um, and having that, having that support, sort of immediately there is huge. The amount of the times we've not conceded a turnover because Danny's been there in support all the time. It's it goes unnoticed, but um, by a lot of folk. But it's a great uh, quality to have, um, and for that reason, he's he's got to be within the squad somewhere. Uh, on to my substitute second row, um, I've gone with Seb Evans. Um, again, another insanely fit rugby player. Um, works so hard on his fitness. And when you see him come on, he's got that heart and he's got that commitment that, um, that very few players have, I think. Um I think you'll see a lot more talented rugby players, but you will not see many more rugby players with a, with uh, with as much heart uh, as Seb. And it it shows. It's very apparent with the way that he plays. He throws himself into everything head first, um, and it's it's just so it's really commendable. Um, so for that, he's got. I've got, I've got to include him in my team. Um, I've gone with two back row substitutes as, as well. The first one on the list I've got is Kieran Mitchell. Now, Kieran is a very young um, player that just really came through last year. Um, but for a boy so young, especially coming into the forwards, incredibly talented, I think. Um, shows a lot of heart while he's on the pitch. And I think... The game for me, where I, f I first thought, yeah, this guy's this guy is good, and he will really come into his own within the next couple of years, was um, White Craig's away um, in last season. Absolutely phenomenal game. His head was on it, and he was he was a standout player for us that game. I thought, um, and I think he's certainly going to be one to watch in the future. So. Uh, he's, I think he's, he deserves his spot in this squad, I think. Um, so another substitute back row, I've got Reese Bonner. Um, now, Reese is a phenomenal rugby player. He's an absolute wrecking ball. He leads by example. Like Michael Harper, you'll see him make a break with boys hanging off his tail. He's absolutely phenomenal with ball in hand um, but he stands out for me as well because he understands um, the importance of not back chatting a referee and you'd be surprised how rare a quality that is um, you see Reese, especially at home games um, chatting back to, to the home bench um, or 
people that he knows on the sidelines saying, cut it out, give the refs, give the ref a bit of slack. I mean, we're trying our best not to to speak back to the referee. We don't need you guys then cancelling out all that good work. Um, and I think that's been a, um, a culture we've been trying incredibly hard of recent years to, to instill in the team that if the referee talks to you, it's yes sir, and back you go. Don't argue with them. Don't make little comments indirectly about him. Just accept what he says and move on. And I think it has been coming through in the squad. Um, but I think Reese especially has been one boy in particular that has um, taken that on board and is really trying to spread that throughout the club, whether he's doing that um, deliberately or subconsciously. Um, but I think having that is fantastic. The only reason he's not starting from a team is that he's made of chocolate and he usually only plays 20 minutes before he gets injured. So... Um, yeah, it's just that's the only reason he's on the bench. He's a fantastic player, he really is. Um, on to my back substitutes now. Um, at number nine, I've got young Scott Anderson. Uh, now, Scott is a very, very talented young nine. And I think with more and more game time, he will only grow as a player um, and as a leader as well. Um, I think um, he does. He has the potential to be a fantastic rugby player. He is a very good rugby player right now, but he has got the potential to be fantastic. And he's um, should we see him uh, stick around with the club? He will certainly be a name to watch in the future. Um, now I've decided to go for. My other two substitutions, a centre sub and a back three sub because I think Finlay can cover 10. But um, we'll go for uh, Ian Gillis as my substitute centre, um, first of all. Again, tight one. He could have been in the starting squad for that chemistry with Mark Wallace. I thought that partnership was fantastic. Um, playing, along, playing alongside those two was phenomenal. And having Ian there as an absolute brick wall, nothing got past him. He defensively just sound and again as another player that was so re well respected within the club um, within the team that whenever he spoke he listened he didn't speak a lot um, in game but when you did when he did speak you listened to it because you know it was right there's another guy that led by example so I couldn't admit Ian from the squad he was phenomenal And my full back substitute, or back three substitute, anyway, I've got Kurt Littlejohn, who was a very exciting player to play alongside with. Um, he had bundles of energy, he had speed, he had that step, and he was a very reliable full back, and I think that's key when um, you've got, in, in a full back anyway, um, full back very much there to tidy up the crap. Um, to neutralise threats uh, and having that reliability there uh, is a must. So um, it's just a shame that uh, Kurt's still not here playing with us and he's, uh, he was away in Australia and whatnot. Um, but another fantastic rugby player and certainly worthy of a spot in the squad. Um, so that's my squad. Um, I think it's fantastic and I think every player in there deserves their spot but I think there's a lot of players that um, are either on the fringes of that there's a lot of debate with a lot of positions there um, there's the likes of Rory Brown um, Chris Mann um, Alex Brooks as well could potentially go in on the wing um, all boys that with more and more time will only get better um, and the other good thing with the current squad we've got right now it's a very young team there's a lot of young names in there we had uh, Craig Hamilton and uh, Kieran Mitchell in there Scott Anderson but there's also the likes of uh, Jack Devine, Sean McCarville um, Scott Barkley, Cammy Pilmer um, 
all boys that given time will become fantastic players and I think if I was asked to do the greatest 15 again in 5-10 years it would be a different looking squad with some of the boys that I've just mentioned there um, so there's a lot there's a lot to come of, from a lot of players at this club and I think it's going to be exciting to see um, how these boys come on in the future um, a couple last wee bits uh, I've seen people picking their coaches as well so my coach I think it would have to be Quinny um, as a coach very very quiet but when he did um, when he does speak it's you shut up and listen um, you know he's just a pool of knowledge and you try and soak up as much as that as, as you can um, he's not an international rugby player for no reason at all um, very well respected amongst the players and um, certainly with myself and a lot of other boys there are uh, when he speaks basically you listen to it um, I would hope that was uh, throughout the team I can only speak for myself but um, yeah he's a fantastic coach and um, hopefully well from this year and going forward as well we can continue, continue to press on with him as well I've got one little special mention as well because I think without this boy the club would um, struggle on a little bit more than it needs to um, but I think the amount of work that uh, we Murray Oliver does around the club whether it's through social media or helping uh, Cal McKenzie um, on match days or just some of the other stuff that he does around the club whether it's fundraising or um, helping with I've seen him I'm pretty sure I've seen him helping with a little bit of coaching here and there as well I think he is a fantastic young man and uh, got nothing for respect for him and I think without him at the club um, it wouldn't be the club that it is especially from a playing aspect as well um, so all I can say to him is thanks for all your work Murray and please keep it up because it doesn't go unnoticed and it's very much appreciated um, other than that I think that's uh, that's me folks so um, hope you enjoyed watching that and I hope you're all keeping safe and uh, I will hopefully see you all down the club when it does open back up again and we're playing games again so all the best, keep safe and we'll see you shortly